Welcome to SKNIS Perspectives, an interactive program of the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service, aired weekly on this radio station. Disaster preparedness comes to the fore of the national discussion as we prepare for the start of the 2013 Atlantic hurricane season. Well, we are in a state of ongoing preparedness. Today, National Disaster Coordinator Carl Herbert is our guest as we look at what is expected to be an active season. Mr. Herbert also shares his thoughts on the recent earthquakes that have impacted St. Kitts and Nevis. Our country is located in a seismic active zone. And as a result of that, we always need to be concerned. I am Ian Richards. Stay with us for Perspectives. And we're here speaking with the National Disaster Coordinator, Mr. Carl Herbert, who, of course, is basically the head of the National Emergency Management Agency in St. Kitts and Nevis. Mr. Herbert, thank you very much for agreeing to speak with us here today as we enter the start of the 2013 Atlantic hurricane season. Before we look at the 2013 forecast, let's look back a little on the more recent seasons. What are your thoughts? Thanks for the opportunity again to have a discussion with you. Past seasons have mainly been accurate in relation to the predictions. Accurate in the sense that they're either very close to what was predicted or they were actually the predictions. And it shows that we are in an area of the world that is very vulnerable to weather systems. And it has been some while since St. Kitts and Nevis has suffered a direct impact from a storm. Would you say that we've been fortunate here? I, I don't know if fortunate, but I want to thank God for us not being impacted. But that brings to the fore the need for us still to be very vigilant and to do what preparations we can because of you know where we are located. All right, so let's look a bit now at the 2013 season. What can we expect? The predictions vary. And so we're looking at about 80 named storms, about nine hurricanes of which about four are likely to be intense. And it is being said to be an active season. And of course, intense means category three or higher. Yes, correct. And it's important to point out that while those are projections, of course, there's no way of knowing even in those storms that do become hurricanes or even the tropical systems that move throughout the season, how many of them would make landfall? Oh, no, no. The, the science is not that exact at this time, no. It's not. I read an article online from Time magazine recently, and it said that it's not just the strength of a storm that makes it dangerous. You also have to look at what it brings with it, and that most likely would be the rain. And, of course, we know that can undermine infrastructure and really wreak havoc on a country. Oh, certainly. And in past years, even though we did not, have a direct impact from a hurricane. We have had several tropical storms that have passed, and we have lost quite a lot of soil, to- a lot of precious topsoil. And we have also had some sea erosion. So it really poses a challenge in different ways to our, our country. And keeping with this same article that I read on time.com, Mr. Herbert, it was titled Tornadoes Were Just the Beginning, of course, to referring to the recent tornadoes that they had in Oklahoma and the United States. It mentions that this season is going to be stormy. And it shows a graph where between 1971 and 1994, there were 1.5 major hurricanes per season, which more than doubled to 3.7 major hurricanes from 1995 to 2012. What are your thoughts there? Well, I have not seen the article, so I'm not familiar with what is in it. But over the years, the prediction has been that there are likely to be increased number of weather systems and also increasing the intensity, and it is linked to climate change. So I believe that that article may have been influenced by that related type of research. And so as we head into the hurricane season this year, where do you think St. Kitts and Nevis stands? Well, we are in a state of ongoing preparedness. Preparedness is just not something that you do and stop. Because remember, the season goes from June to November. So there's ongoing activities. So we are appealing and we are 
reaching out to individuals, families, institutions, organizations to play their part because the more persons, institutions get prepared, the better the country would be. So we are in an ongoing state of preparedness. And preparedness for individuals at this stage means exactly? Making sure that they look at things like the insurance, protection of their dwelling places, shutters, storage of non-perishable items, water containers, checking their, their premises to ensure that there's not debris that can fly. Also, I want to extend it to the institution, especially those areas where persons are doing mechanic work, where they have lots of parts around. Also to the construction industry, we want to appeal to them to ensure that they have some measures in place, some procedures in place in the event that we are threatened that some of those items don't get loose, they can be properly secured, stored, so that they don't become missiles and become threat to, to life and limb. And it's important for persons to note that they don't necessarily have to wait for a hurricane warning or hurricane alert to be issued, basically, they should stock up on things now. What, talk a bit about that. Well, yes, as you say, we need persons to stock up on non-perishable items like the tin foods, um, the crackers, extra medicines for persons who have special needs. We want families to talk about where they may do shelter if, if necessary. We want to encourage persons, as I said, to clean their yards, to get rid of um, items, metal, lumber, things that can fly and become become dangerous. Um, we want persons to look at their personal documents to ensure that they have some means of storing them, preferably in waterproof containers, you know, bags, so that they can be protected from, you know, water damage, etc. So, Mr. Herbert, let's talk a bit now about some of the shelters around the island. Where can persons access that information? That information will be issued in due time. We're waiting on a committee that is charged with that responsibility. And once we get that information, it will be published on our website. It will be given to the media. So we are waiting that information. And what's the website address? It's nema.cairn. But sir, but let's turn our attention a bit now to a recent development. I understand that St. Kitts and Nevis was part of a pilot, CDEMA, which is the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, um, in collaboration with the ACP and EU countries, and it really was an enhanced community resilience project. What can you tell us about this? The project sought to build resilience in the old world community. It was a pilot project in St. Kitts and Guilla. I think there was the BVI, where... So that project attempts were made to build capacity, build resilience, where in the old old community, for example, there was training done in several areas, including hazard assessment, plan development, emergency radio communication. Some work was also done on replacing some damaged windows in the community center and enhancing the safety of the the contents of that center by putting up some burglar bars and uh, some emergency equipment like shovels and um, pickaxes and the like were provided to the community to assist them in their preparations and their response to a possible impact. And they can also be used in, in training. So the persons targeted were community persons? Oh yes, it was the, the old world community from the, the very outset. The community was involved in identifying their needs and the project sought to address the needs to the extent that the funds you know, made it possible. So it was all from community base. Can you tell us a bit more about that in the sense of which persons were targeted? Was it ordinary persons from the street or would they have to be involved in a particular sector or area of work? Well, it was community residents, residents of the old old community. Ordinary persons ordinary, on the street. Yes, ordinary persons who are interested. There is a disaster management committee of volunteers in that community and in other communities. And so it was through that organized structure that 
the project was undertaken, but it, it did not exclude anyone. It all depends on person's interest and availability. So there, there was no, no um, biases. It was open to all. And how many persons were trained? Well, they had different components. So, for example, I think with the radio communication, you may have, you may have had about 12 persons. With the hazard mapping, I think it was over 20. So it varied. And why would you say it was important for St. Kitts and Nevis to participate in this pilot? Well, wherever communities can be enhanced, wherever improvements can be made to help communities to become more resilient, then, you know, that is welcome. And so the old world community has its own peculiar challenges, as some other communities may have. And so that community was selected and benefited from the project. And is it just natural disasters or also were they trained to help with man-made disasters? Well, the, the principles can be applied across the board. But again, it depends on what it is. One will have to apply a certain measure. So what would you say is the next step forward for this project? Well, the project has ended, but the community has been left with some deliverables. And so it's for the community now to ensure that there's a proper management structure for those equipment so that should the need arises, there's no confusion, but there's a clear understanding of how those equipment can be accessed and managed in relation to the plan that was being developed. It was in a draft form, so one will have to look at that draft, and finalize it so it becomes the document for that area. And we are speaking to National Disaster Coordinator, Mr. Carl Herbert, as we continue to look at disasters in St. Kitts and Nevis. Mr. Herbert, we, it would be remiss of me not to be able to speak to you about the recent earthquakes that St. Kitts and Nevis had. Um, the first one was on April 30th. It was registered at 5.3 on the Richter scale. And a few weeks later, May 18, to be exact, another tremor. This time it was 4.8. Is there a reason to be concerned? I would not say that there is not a reason to be concerned in the sense that our country is located in a seismic active zone. And as a result of that, we always need to be concerned, but not in the sense to become panicked. And that is why we have been doing some public service announcements. And it has become, I think, a household name, Drop, Cover and Hold. And so we are urging residents to pay attention. So we want to encourage the building sector to ensure that the building keeping with the code. And we want to encourage the inspectorate, the building inspectorate, to ensure that construction is done in keeping with the code so that we can have structures that can be resilient to a, to a certain extent. One never knows the exact magnitude of an earthquake that we'll get, but whatever we can do within our systems, then we should. Is there any evidence or any theories as to why these may be happening at this particular time? No, I don't. I haven't received any kind of information about that, and I don't want to speculate. And so, your advice to persons, Zink, it's an Ibis, if one, a stronger earthquake were to occur, what should they do? Well, as I said, the, the public service announcement gave clear guidance, mainly drop, cover, and hold. So one has to do that and to try and be as safe as possible and try to be calm. Any final comments that you'd like to leave us with? just want to say that earthquake monitoring has been going on in St. Kitts and in the region from back in the 70s. Even though we don't speak about it, there is daily, every day of the year, as we say, non-stop monitoring that is done with some sensors that are based on our island, our country, linked to the Seismic Research Center in Trinidad and Tobago at the University of the West Indies. And so many earthquakes are registered on almost a daily basis, but just that we don't feel them, but the instrumentation, the technology allows them to monitor. So we're just asking persons to spread the word as to the drop cover and hold and uh, to try and educate themselves as much as possible about the various hazards that confront us. National Disaster Coordinator Carl Herbert.
Now, during our discussion, you would have heard me on several occasions refer to an article on Time Magazine's website which highlighted some interesting facts and statistics. We have a few more minutes with you and so we are pleased to present some excerpts from a video production posted with the article. The presenter is Jerry Bell of the Climate Prediction Center. We're predicting an above normal Atlantic hurricane season this year with the possibility that the season could be extremely active. Specifically, the outlook calls for a 70% chance of an above normal season, a 25% chance of a near normal season, and only a 5% chance for a below normal season. For the season as a whole, NOAA is predicting a 70% chance for each of the following ranges of activity. 13 to 20 named storms, 7 to 11 hurricanes, and 3 to 6 major hurricanes. These ranges are well above the long-term average, and they reflect the forecast for an above normal, possibly very active season. This outlook does not predict when, where, or how many storms may strike land, but during active hurricane seasons like we expect this year, the probability of multiple hurricane strikes increases for both the United States and the entire region around the Caribbean Sea. The outlook for this year is typical of the active hurricane seasons we've been seeing since 1995. In this current high activity era, the number of hurricanes has increased by 60% compared to the 1971 to 1994 period. The number of major hurricanes has more than doubled since 1995. A substantial body of climate research has shown that a stronger West African monsoon combined with warmer Atlantic waters are the main factors contributing to this high activity era. The monsoon season in Western Africa has been stronger and wetter than it was between 1971 and 1994. The West African monsoon often gives rise to the thunderstorms that eventually become hurricanes. Those storms are more likely to strengthen and become tropical storms and hurricanes when the Atlantic Ocean waters are warmer. Water temperatures throughout the Atlantic hurricane region have been warmer than average during the past 18 years. In contrast, Atlantic Ocean temperatures were cooler during the low activity era before 1995. For this upcoming hurricane season, NOAA's most sophisticated climate model predicts the Atlantic to be warmer than average again this year. That model also predicts the Pacific to have cooler water, so El Nino is not expected to form. Typically, El Nino acts to reduce the Atlantic hurricane activity. This combination of an enhanced West African monsoon, warmer Atlantic Ocean temperatures, and the absence of El Nino are the primary factors behind NOAA's 2013 Atlantic hurricane season outlook. We will continue to monitor evolving conditions in the ocean and atmosphere throughout the Atlantic hurricane season. The bulk of the hurricane activity is expected to occur during August, September, and October, so NOAA will update this outlook in early August. When a hurricane or tropical storm forms, the National Hurricane Center tracks every storm and issues landfall forecasts that are specific to each storm. The Hurricane Center issues these forecasts up to a week in advance. Please evacuate if you are asked to do so. Your preparations and your common sense will go a long way to helping you and your family stay safe this hurricane season. And please don't be complacent. It's just too late to begin your preparations once a hurricane is already approaching. Remember, you can always access information about hurricanes at NEMA's website, which is www.nema.kn. That's our program. I am Ian Richards. I'll see you next week. We're pleased that you joined us for this edition of SKNIS Perspectives. Join us every week at this same time on this radio station. This program is produced by the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.